Hello, this short demonstration will show some of the new features introduced to the Actions Pack. For a start, Smart Crop Action has been added, which allows to intelligently remove any empty space surrounding the image. As we can see, this sample image has some empty white space around it, quite a lot on the right, a little bit on the left, a little bit on the bottom, and just a tiny bit on the top. But if we enable the Smart Crop Action, it automatically detects that space and removes it. And we can set the um, minimum margins that it should keep, uh, therefore adjusting the amount of space that still remains. And we can control exactly how much white space is removed using the tolerance. If we decrease the tolerance, uh, as you can see the amount of uh, space that has been removed grows. That is because the tolerance setting controls how sensitive the program is to the differences in the uh, neighboring pixels, how it is sensitive to the differences in their colors. So if you have a lot of images to crop and each of them has different amount of white space surrounding it, um, you cannot use standard crop action and you have to actually use smart crop that intelligently examines each and every image and removes white space as per your settings. And by the way, uh, the background color uh, doesn't have to be white, it can be really any color. The program will automatically detect it and remove any empty space. Another new feature is that the orientation setting has been added to several action and it uh, basically allows you to specify whether or not a particular action should be applied depending on image orientation. For example, if I turn on the resize action like this, at the moment it doesn't do anything, it doesn't resize the image. However, if I change the orientation to portrait, as you can see, the image was resized because the original image was in the portrait orientation. But if I change it back to landscape, the action knows that it should be applied only to the landscape images. And because this is not a landscape image, it therefore um, is not applied. We have completely modified and improved the color replacement uh, action. It now supports per channel settings including the opacity or alpha channel. In this case, suppose I want to replace the white background of the image with uh, yellow, so I just turn on the action and as you can see it immediately replaces the background. And notice how it does keep some of the um, not so white colors uh, in sync with the new color per se. Um, the nice thing is that I can control opacity much more precisely. For example, if I enable the um, opacity or the alpha channel replacement like this, as you can see, because I've defined the opacity of the replacement color to be exactly 40, um, it is immediately reflected and uh, all the pixels whose color got replaced now have this value set for the opacity. Uh, the tolerance setting has been also improved in that it gives you more control. Um, first of all, there is a per channel tolerance that is, uh, the program is in this case instructed to find any colors that are uh, close to the white color and uh, this particular opacity. But how close? Well, within um, plus or minus 90. Uh, because white, uh, white color is uh, 255 for all the components, that means that the uh, range of colors that the program is looking for are defined as follows 165 to 255 for each of the components but um, you can also adjust the uh, range more precisely uh, using these drop-downs 
And what's even more interesting is that uh, the replacement color can be dynamic as well, which is the case here actually. Um, and uh, the way it is dynamic is basically the dynamic color is determined by the uh, replacement color that you specify and the tolerance setting. That is, uh, this tolerance determines in a way the replacement color because otherwise if, if you would um, uncheck those options you could see that um, that um, all the colors were placed with a single color but if you enable the tolerance option you can now see this sort of reddish shadow here um, which is actually calculated dynamically. As was mentioned uh, earlier, the uh, image orientation setting has been added to quite a few actions and um, rotate or rotation is one of these actions. Uh, it may be quite convenient for you to, for example, rotate images by 90 degrees but only if they have a particular orientation. Um, in this case, it will rotate an image if the image is in portrait orientation. Um, so if I check that, um, the image is rotated by 90 degrees. Why? Because it was in portrait orientation. And by the way, uh, the default setting is any orientation, that is the action will be applied to any image. However, you can choose other orientation settings, basically all possible combinations of them, uh, in this drop down here. So if I leave it at any orientation, the action is still performed. Uh, finally, a barcode action was introduced in the 2010 version, uh, which allows you to um, overlay barcodes over your images, like this, as you can see here. Uh, you can control various settings like uh, the size of the barcode, its position, like this, um, and of course the value. In this case it's a fixed barcode, meaning the same barcode will be applied to every image. However, it need not be that way. You can define a custom field um, and um, put a reference to it here and um, every image will have a different barcode depending on the value that will be in that field. However, dynamic barcodes are uh, available only in the 2010 version, so if you have not upgraded yet, please do so to take advantage of the dynamic barcode feature as well as dynamic textual and image watermarks. Uh, these features are available uh, starting from the 2010 version. Um, this concludes the short demonstration of the new features in the Actions Pack, uh, so if you have any questions feel free to contact us and um, if you liked what you saw then please consider getting this new improved version of the Actions Pack. Thank you.